Hello and welcome back to another video on Unpack Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be covering Apple's upcoming developers conference, WWDC. This is their annual worldwide developers conference and it's where they announce all of their new software advancements. This event is coming up on Monday the 10th of June for our US viewers or for my Australian viewers, it is the 11th of June um, over here. This is a very exciting event. We're hearing that it could be some major software upgrades, so I'm going to cover all that today as well as how you can watch it. It's very exciting, so let's get straight into it. All right, so this event, as I mentioned, is on the 10th of June in the US, so 10 a.m. Pacific time on Monday. Um, but here in Australia, it is very early on Tuesday morning on the 11th at 3 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So um, definitely very excited to watch it, um, and hopefully you are as well. Now, if you would like to watch the event, um, what you can do is um, when you go to Apple's website, doesn't matter... Um, which one you go to, just go to apple.com. Uh, but if it does take you to your local region site like it is here on the Australian site, it will have it at the top and it will say Apple Worldwide Developers Conference. Join us online on our US site from the 11th to the 15th of June. All you got to do is click learn more there. And then it will take you to the US site where you can watch the Worldwide Developers Conference WWDC. And you can see um, it's on here. You can add it to your calendar and also see the past events. So that's one way you can watch it on Apple's website. Another way that you can watch it is through their developer channel. So um, we can search up Apple Developer. And they have an iOS app which you can download um, and watch it on here as well. So as you can see, I do need an update on this app. But uh, this is one of the ways you can watch the WWDC keynote. Um, get the Apple Developer app, and that's another way. Alternatively, you can also watch it on YouTube, which is one final way that you can choose to do so. So that's how you can watch the event. Um, and now let's get into some of the features, and we'll start off with iOS. So for iOS, we're hearing that this could be the biggest update in years, potentially similar to an iOS 7 style upgrade, where we get some big visual changes and also a lot of new features. So Starting off with the visual changes, we're hearing that we could potentially see a revamped control center. This control center has been with us since iOS 12 and it is starting to feel a little bit old and clunky. So we're not hearing a total redesign, but maybe just some changes in the options. So there's more customizability with more um, sense and uh, just ease of use in this center. If you use the Apple Home accessories, they might have a redesign layout for that just for it to make a bit more sense as well. And we could potentially also have some of these control center features coming to the home screen as well, where you could just toggle on mobile data or Wi-Fi or your focus modes, for example, right from the home screen rather than having to go into control center every time. We're also hearing that the home screen may finally allow applications to be positioned wherever you want rather than be them being snapped in a grid from left to right from top to bottom, uh, like it has been since the beginning of iPhone, we might actually have some more customizability just like we'd see on Android. And the biggest thing that we're hearing will characterize iOS 18 is AI. So we're hearing AI is going to be one of the biggest announcements Apple has across the board of all their platforms and the iPhone will be getting a lot of that as well. So unfortunately though, we are hearing that it may be restricted to the iPhone 15 Pro series um, and then the, obviously the upcoming iPhone 16 series. So the older devices may not get all of those AI features. However, the good news is it does sound like iOS 18 will be supported on all devices that can run iOS 17. So that means the iPhone 10s and 10R or later. However, as I mentioned before, some of the latest features uh, might require some more resource um, capable processors, just like the A17 Pro chip found in the iPhone 15 Pro. So you may miss out on some of those features on those older devices. But other than that, that sounds like what we're hearing for iOS 18. We're also hearing that we might get a completely redesigned settings page as well, which would be great because 
does feel like a bit of an endless scrolling mess at the moment and we have had that for a long time as well. So it's really exciting hearing about all the features we have got for iOS 18. All right, so this is just a quick editor's note. I forgot to mention this in the video, but a couple of weeks ago, Apple did announce some features that will be coming to iOS 18 in the form of accessibility. So last year they did this as well, where they announced some accessibility features before WWDC, just to give you a taste of what will be to come. Um, so to find it, we can go to Google and just search up iOS 18 accessibility features and we can go and see their newsroom post from the 16th of May. And it says at the top, Apple announces new accessibility features, including eye tracking, music haptics, and vocal shortcuts. You can see at the top, they've got a bit of a video uh, demonstrating uh, all the new features they're announcing, and it says coming later this year. So this pretty much means it will be in the iOS 18 update. It may not be out straight away. It might be like a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 sort of update uh, type thing, but... Uh, they will be coming with iOS 18. So this sort of gives us a taste of what some of the features we can expect are in regards to accessibility. So if we scroll down, there's a lot of text here. But you can see the first one is eye tracking. So that's where you can uh, use your eyes and it will control the operating system for you. So you can see in this case, um, there's a little box around the uh, podcast app or whatever application is open on your iPhone or iPad. So that's a really great way um, if you need to be able to control your device with your eyes. That is quite an advanced tool and it's really great that it's coming to iOS. Additionally, you can see that we've got music hap haptic um, options. So it can play haptics along to the tune of your music. As you can see here, uh, as the music plays, the phone responds with some haptic vibrations so that you can also feel, and it's another way of hearing it, um, other than just the music itself. Additionally, we've got new features for a wide range of speech. So these are your vocal shortcuts where you can control your phone with your voice in a more advanced and intuitive way. So that's really great there, and you can see some screenshots of how it would work, such as open activity rings and things like that. Uh, we've also got vehicle motion cues, so to sort of help reduce motion sickness, um, the display will respond in a way depending on the way that your vehicle is moving, for example. You can also see that voice control is coming to CarPlay, um, and we've also got some of these accessibility features coming to Vision OS as well, which will make it more accessible for more people, which is great. And we've also got a list of additional updates. So I'll leave this linked in the description below if you'd like to see it. Um, it's really great that Apple is spending some good time on these accessibility features for people to use. And it just gives us a bit of a sneak preview as to what's to come in the accessibility field on iOS 18. And now let's get back to the video. And now let's move on to iPad OS. So if I grab the iPad here, iPad OS 18, you can expect all of the same features from iOS um, 18 to come across to this. So all the AI features, the new control center, potential upgraded uh, home screen layouts, and also the new settings page. And hopefully we might get a bit more multitasking capabilities as well. With the new M4 iPad Pros that have just come out with their very powerful chips and the OLED screens, I do really hope that we might get some more uh, abilities on those devices to do some more Mac-like tasks so that they can be used more like a computer rather than still being stuck with the limitations that we have seen on iPadOS for the past number of years. So, But other than that, we're not really hearing much else for the iPad. Um, it does hopefully sound like it will be supported on all the devices that support iPadOS 17, um, but we cannot confirm that at the moment. And we're not really hearing anything specific for the iPad. So hopefully Apple has something exciting in store, um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see for that. Now, in terms of the Mac and Mac OS, um, Mac OS 15 uh, should have some good new features. Uh, all the AI things should come across to it, uh, hopefully, um, which will be really good. We are hearing that the redesigned settings page that is coming potentially to the iPhone and the iPad would also be coming to the Mac. Um, we, I know that we only got a redesigned settings page not that long ago with macOS Ventura, um, only a year or so back. However, 
it would be good to have some design consistency so that would make sense for it to come across to all platforms. We're also expecting some AI productivity features to come to the Mac. However, we're not entirely sure um, what type of AI features would be coming. Um, we just know that they probably will be. And we're also not sure what they're going to call it. So it's Mac OS 15, uh, that's where we're up to, but we're just not sure what name. That's always an interesting surprise. So that's what we're hearing from the Mac. Um, not entirely sure what supported devices there will be as well, um, but I always like a bit of mystery, so I don't mind having a little bit of um, stuff to surprise us. Now, in terms of the watch with watchOS 11, we're not hearing that there'll be too many revamps. Um, obviously, we just had the huge redesign with uh, watchOS 10, so this will more be just a minor refresh. Um, maybe some AI features come to Siri on the watch and hopefully maybe some um, improvements to the Apple Workout app as well we're hearing. But other than that, don't expect a huge update for the Apple Watch and hopefully all the same supported devices uh, without anything getting dropped this year. Also, tvOS um, 18 will be coming along. Um, not entirely sure what will be coming with tvOS 18, but there's usually always some nice little features that come along as well. And obviously now for the first time this year, we have VisionOS 2.0 as well. So that's um, an extra platform that Apple is developing for. Hopefully they have some new use cases that they can come up with for the Apple Vision Pro. Um, that would be exciting, hopefully just to revamp some hype for it and get it, um, make it a bit more useful for people because... Um, it's definitely dying off in after all the hypes uh, died down. So definitely something to revamp that would be good. And it also, we're hearing that it will probably be launched in a few other countries, maybe even Australia as well, but we'll have to just wait and see. So yeah, that's pretty much all we're hearing from all the software side of things uh, for WWDC. And obviously this is a developers conference, so it is mainly focused on software. Occasionally we do get some hardware announcements. However, Credible leakers are saying that we shouldn't expect any hardware at this event, especially considering we just had a May event with those new iPad Pros and also the iPad Air and the price drop of the regular iPad. Um, so I wouldn't expect too many hardware announcements, if any, at this event. So it sounds like it'll be pretty full as it is with just all the software, with iOS 18 being a pretty big update and all the other platforms getting nice uh, boost as well. And it is always nice because this is a free update that comes to all supported devices. So you don't have to pay to uh, get these updates. Uh, they're just free for everyone with support devices. So that's always good. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful and it's given you some good insight into what to expect for this upcoming Worldwide Developers Conference. Uh, hopefully you're as excited as I am about this uh, event and it will be really exciting to see just what Apple announces. Thanks for watching this video on Unpacked Technologies. Let me know in the comments below what you're most excited for for this event because I'd love to hear from you guys as well as any other uh, videos you would like me to make and maybe if there's any particular features you'd like me to cover of this new software after the event. And also let me know down there whether I should install the developer betas on my devices. Um, I know they can be a bit unstable at the start but uh, sometimes with the new features I do like to give them a go. So. We'll just see how we go. And just a word of caution before I end this video, obviously the developer betas for all the platforms will be released, but I would probably advise against installing it straight away, especially if it's your main device. If you've got a secondary device and you don't rely on it, um, go through it, but a lot of apps don't work. It can be very unstable in the early developer betas. Um, so definitely worth maybe waiting for a beta or two. Generally the betas come out every two weeks. So it'll come out, one will come out on the day of the event and then every two weeks after that until they get into the weekly uploads into uh, the run into September. Um, if we have a look, you can see, obviously we've got the conference uh, on Monday or Tuesday, depending on where you live in June. And then we'll have betas for all the platforms right up until a September release. So that's what we're looking at. Um, so definitely just be prepared for that, but, um, I'll probably make some videos about the new software, but just make sure you are aware. Definitely have a backup if you're going to install it, but I'd probably advise against until it's a little bit more stable. And with that, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.